Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for June 2nd of 2023. Um, let's go ahead and take a moment and drop into the heart space here. So close your eyes if you wish. Put your attention to the physical heart. Finding yourself connecting with the earth, heart to heart with Gaia. Taking that deep breath from the earth and just allowing every cell of your body to connect, to ground with the earth. Just fully sink in, or rather, just be and allow earth to fully envelop you to physical mental emotional and just be with the earth and next connecting with your light you as creator god Breathing in that light, imagine that as you take a breath in, that that light that is within you just ignites within the heart. And it expands. And it just keeps expanding into every cell of your body, in between every cell. Just inviting in and allowing your light to fully step into your presence. All right, and that brings you into the heart space. You can do the third breath if you wish, which is just you becoming that conduit, that connection between the earth and you, creator. All right, well, Good morning from the Ozarks and from Northern Cali and South Carolina. Hey, Valerie from Colorado. Hey, Marcia from the North Carolina coast. Hey, Wisconsin. Good to see you here, Jennifer. So, hey, Connie, and you're from Maine. Awesome. So, um, yeah, if you are here live, please do drop over here on the chat side if you wish. Hey, Anne from Ohio. Um, and then you can post your questions over here on the questions tab, if you will. Um, that way I for sure see the questions. And if you are watching on YouTube or after the fact, you are welcome to join us live here if you ever wish. Uh, simply sign up for our newsletters at twistedsage.com. And we send out a newsletter for when we are having our lives. Hey, Sarah Levine from New York. Hey, I hope to see you, Sarah, in New York. Well, I'll be at the Dowsing Conference, actually, uh, this next weekend. I'll actually be out at the Dowsing Conference. So, yeah, if anybody is out on the northeast coast of the U.S., um, uh, Dowsing Conference, just go to dowsers.org and that'll have the information. I'll be speaking on Saturday, doing a one hour presentation on light anchors. And then on Sunday, I'll be doing a half day workshop. Uh, it's an energy healers workshop. Basically, we're going to learn how to use some of the tools, get attunements to, to the etheric, to the higher dimensional aspects of some of the tools, such as the wands for light anchoring, um, we're going to be doing some activations like the Merkaba, the Sacred Heart, things like that. And learn to run energy at a distance. So it should be a really good workshop if anybody's able to attend and we're not able to broadcast live or anything of that nature. It's an in-person. So anyway, hey, Janet from South Carolina. Hey, Samson. John from Minnesota. All right. Well, let's see. Um, we'll start with announcements. And again, if you have questions, please do drop them over here on the questions tab. Um, I don't think I have any questions from email. 
of course, we just announced this, uh, you know, 36 hours ago. So thank you all for being here that are here live. And um, announcements, let's see. As you can see, the horizontal chamber behind me is all tore down. We are working on the new chamber. It has a steel structure. It's a horizontal. Um, it's going to be pretty fantastic. Hey, they're calling to tell me my motorcycle is ready to pick up. Yay. Um, and let's see the uh, horizontal chamber that we are making for that we're going to release here at the dowsing convention. Um, it's going to be pretty fantastic. So I wish it was all assembled so that I could show you what it looks like. But right now it's just steel structures and some rings and tortoises laying around. So anyway, um, let's see other announcements. Oh, hey, I'm going to actually list this later today. I'm going to call it the key pendant halo ring because, oh man, you know, the key pendants, as we talked last 50 questions Friday, uh, we were releasing some of the, um, oh, what did we call them? Discounted key pendants, which are the, the key pendant 3.0, the heavier gauge with the hole in the center. Um, we still have a, quite a few of those discounted pendants left, which simply have small aesthetic issues, like some scrapes, or maybe the hole is just slightly oblonged, things like that. Um, nothing that causes any energetic quality issues for sure. And most people don't see any of those aesthetic issues. You kind of know if you're an artist, you know, you're pretty particular about your work and you know that we're pretty particular about our work. So they're simply the key pendants that are on sale are the ones that just aren't the perfect quality that we always, you know, strive for, but they're still fantastic. So anyway, the reason I'm, I just want to say if the key pendants, fantastic. There's still some of those discounted ones left And later today. I will list this halo ring. It's, um, I don't even remember what millimeter ring it is, but it makes it sing. You know, I love the new key pendants anyway because they're always chiming when I'm wearing them, especially if I wear them with other tools. Um, I'm afraid we can't guarantee the quality of the electroplating if you start to add <laughs> the halo to the key pendant. But I really do like that it sings. Yeah, my key pendant, I went to um, hot, hot Sulphur Springs, Colorado, and I wore my pendant, so it turned a little dark from the sulfur in the pools. But um, anyway, that'll be something that will that I'll list here later today is just the halo ring for the key pendant. Um, and let's see if there was anything else. We have um, some little activators. You might have saw a picture on social media. I still haven't gotten those done. I don't know if we'll get those done this weekend here before I leave because I leave for New York on Monday. Um, and then we also have some small generators that are going to have to wait a couple weeks too uh, that we're going to release. They're just a, a small tensor field generator, you know, tensor field generator. And these small ones, mm, they're, you know, they're, they're not very big and they're going to be kind of loose so that they can be somewhat collapsed and they're more like a fidget toy. So those would be pretty cool. And we're going to put those under the prototypes because they don't have a name. I'm not sure what the energy of them is. I mean, it's a culmination of all the energies we create here. Um, it's kind of borderlining the wisdom and the newer energy that's coming in um, is what that little generator will be. And it's just something that since it's not a perfectly rounded generator, it's somewhat collapsed already. It's something that you can throw in your handbag, your purse, your pocket, whatever, and not worry about um, knocking it out of shape because it comes out of shape, which is, you know, part of the part of what that generator is. Anyway, um, yeah. So I don't have any other announcements that I can think of for anything upcoming. So let's see if we have any questions. Hi, Rochelle. I have some questions, but Safari won't let me post it. 
Hmm. All right. So we'll wait to see if Rochelle can post some questions here. And otherwise, let me think. Um, last time we had a gathering, we we did at the end that no space place. Um, and I'm not sure. To me, it felt like it went really well, that, that um, nothing space. And, uh, you know, I'd always love to hear some feedback on that. But if you haven't had a chance to watch that, do check that out. Our last 50 questions Friday at the very end, we did the meditation of that nothing space. And that's basically what this new chamber is, is, is holding is that nothing space. Um, I had it set up a couple days ago and was in it and it was pretty intense in that everything just goes quiet. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. Your mind goes quiet physical body it's like everything just everything's just quiet and it's in that space that we can start to dislodge some of those really tightly held patterns of creation whether it is something in the physical or life situation or whatever it is you're, you're just it's a reoccurring pattern and you're like, man, I, you know, I really want to let this go. And I have tried to give it to my soul. I've tried to say, okay, I'm complete with this experience and just to hand it over and to just be complete with it. But it keeps coming back. And so there's still something that is holding that into your creation, into your creation pattern. And so this nothing space to me it might be a solution to that to to allow us to step in and fully surrender and release what that pattern is that is causing us physical mental emotional life situation um issues something that we're like okay hey i'm a master here and i'm i'm done with this experience and i wish to move on into new, more joyful, beneficial experiences for me. Um, you know, because really that's why we as humans are here, incarnate, is to have the experiences. And part of this whole awakening, connecting with your light, is about you allowing newer potentials of experiences to come in. And that's also what the energy of of the multiverse, the energy of everything of creation is being held for each one of us right now to drop the old patterns of creation for those experiences, good, bad, beautiful, ugly. Otherwise, um, those experiences that, that we have over and over again through the lifetimes and those experiences that were just, okay, Hey, I'm, I'm done with this and I'm ready to set it down. And I feel a lot of you really feeling into this because this is huge because that realization that there are those patterns and those experiences that you no longer wish to participate in is the first thing to bring those into awareness. The second thing is just to be in the heart and say, okay, soul, I hand these over. I am complete with these experiences. Um, anyway, uh, Sarah, could you please comment on what we could use for painful inflammation, such as gout? <clears throat> you know, I really like the wisdom wand. The wisdom wand is my absolute favorite tool. Um, it can, <clears throat> the wisdom wand, when you run energy with it, you are basically going to the core of the issue the core of where this even comes from, whatever lifetime or experience that inflammation issue came from, um, or whether it's just stuck energy, you know, that's basically stuck energy. Everything's energy. So that wisdom wand, when you use it to run energy into that space and place, it will help to unstick that energy and to bring a lot of that into wisdom. And again, no matter what the source of that is. And then plus the tensor fields, the tensor fields are also shown to reduce swelling and tissue, you know, and well, as is copper, you know, that's why you use copper bracelets. It doesn't have to be a tensor ring because it would reduce swelling in tissue such as with arthritis. Um, 
but then the tensor fields are just beyond what copper brings, obviously. Uh, let's see, Jennifer, I know you have answered this question in the past. For gardens, the Gaia sphere works the best in the new energy or the golden fire. Or just feel into what we feel will work best for the space. Oh, it is always best to feel into what will work best for the space. Um, just because it is great practice and an exercise of feeling into what feels best for your space. But for the Gaia spheres, um, I really like the new energy Gaia because it it's just it, it brings a higher potentials to the entire everything in nature, you know, because it is made with that wisdom energetics. And again, that wisdom ring is one that you can put over a plant in the morphogenic field or the conscious consciousness of the plant. That morphogenic field is able to repattern the energy to where the plant is pulling nutrients out of the soil that were not there before. So the, the new energy Gaia sphere, which is the, um, it, it's the wisdom energy is one that is just allowing higher potentials, allowing the shifting, the raising in frequency vibration realms of, of, of nature, of plants, of the earth, of divas. And so that's what I see, Jennifer, is that that new energy Gaia sphere basically just takes things to a newer, higher, brighter level. Um, Rochelle, I've had a Badar coil for a few days. In the dark, I can't tell which is the active side or are both sides active. Oh, so yes. So the question is about the Badar coil and which is the active side. The Badar coil with the ring in it is creating the same energy field on both sides. Now, the Badar coil alone only creates it's an energy pump by itself, and it creates a flow of energy in one direction. But when you have that Badar coil with the ring, that energy flow, not only does it change and expand, bring in all these potentials, but it is also creating an energy flow out the bottom side, which is exactly the same as the top side. Is the Badar coil immersible in water? Has it worked on plants? You know, and I haven't tried the Bader coil on plants, but, you know, I am certain that it is going to do the same as the wisdom rings for plants because basically that's what it is, is that wisdom energetics. And if those Bader coils are submersible, um, you know, I really do not know. I believe that those cases may be water, water resistant, but probably not waterproof. Um, and I am not sure how that bait our coil that is inside the plastic case. I do not know how that reacts with water. Um, it's, it's a circuit board. So I, I really, really don't know what, I really don't know the answer to that question on how safe the bait our coil is with submersing in water. Uh, Donna, I got the Ascension grid pyramid in my car on my dashboard. Is that a good thing to do? It felt right to put it there. And what is it all for? It was a gift given to me and would like to know more about it. So the Ascension Grid Pyramid, <clears throat> yes, they love to ride on the dash of the car. And I'm so glad that you intuited that, Donna, because yes, the Ascension Grid Pyramids love to be on the dash of the car. That's just a great spot for them. That's where we all end up putting ours is on, and so on the dashes of our cars. Um, and so basically what the Ascension Grid Pyramid does is it creates a field when it is there, it expands, you know, it, it expands about a hundred feet across 50 and eh, about 50 to hundred feet across, depending the, the size that it expands to is not set in stone. It's basically for like a home when you put the ascension grid pyramid or the quantum grid points in the home, it expands to the size of the home. Um, so it's not a specific size of field that it creates. But, you know, when you have it in your car, I see that it, it expands to where it's covering the entire roadway and your car. So it's holding that field. Um, you know, that that field, it, it's kind of like having a tensor field generator in a way in that it is it, that field 
is you're immersed within that field. So when you're immersed within that field, of course, that is bringing in more grounding, connecting. It is holding space for the clearing away of debris, you know, physical, mental, emotional, life situational creation. Um, it's helping to clear away debris that no longer serves us. And it's, um, you know, and of course it creates that harmonizing field. So electromagnetics, dense consciousness, ghost sway words, all the fun stuff. None of that really holds within that field because it shifts, it shifts in vibration. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's really cool that you have the Ascension grid pyramid on your dash. That's, <laughs> that's pretty great. What tools might hold and be effective in creating my intention of no biting bugs on my clothing or body? You know, Rochelle, what I would suggest for to keep, you know, keep the biting bugs out of your field is the Merkaba. You know, you can put that into a tensor field generator, but I feel like doing it with your Merkaba is one, it's going to give you, um, you know, more of that connection with self and that bringing in your own light and that self empowerment aspect, because the Merkaba is a tool that is yours. It is connected to you. It's not an outside tool. It's not something outside of you that you're bringing in to assist you. It is you and your field that you're getting very up close and personal with, and you are putting in your intentions. You're putting in, in your foot, you're, you're putting your foot down. You're just saying, Hey, okay enough of this experience let's release and clear whatever this is and again you know when you're doing this kind of work it's not th the soul level work when you go into the heart space like you do when you activate the merkaba and gosh i'm trying to think which video gosh because we have so many merkaba videos over the year you know we have that crystal merkaba.com but just, just find one of the Merkaba activations because we have audios, videos, a lot of them out there that resonate with you. You know, I like the newer, shorter versions. Um, so when you do your Merkaba activation, you're in the heart space. And when you put your intentions into this electromagnetic field that's around the body, the Merkaba field, when you put your intentions into there, it's like you're working with your soul. So instead of telling a kindergartner your intentions and having to write it out very specifically and in crayon and everything else, when you work with your soul, your soul already knows your intentions. So when you activate your Merkaba and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this because I want to keep these bugs off of me. You know, I want to keep them out of my field. And, and so your soul already knows your intention when you step in to activate that Merkaba field. And so you don't have to get very logical and specific with your intentions when you're dealing with your soul. Actually, when you get more logical and specific with intentions, a lot of times that can lead to maybe not exactly what it is that you truly wanted. Um, because you're putting these limits on it. And so then your soul and creation is working within these limitations and these boundaries. And so when you just step in from the heart and when you're in the heart, the soul knows what the human desire and intents are. That is part of the surrender. Um, so anyway, yeah, I would suggest the Merkaba activation. You can put it into a, um, into a tensor field generator as well. But I just feel like the Merkaba is going to be your, your best tool to use. All right. I'm just reading a comment here from Sarah. Fashion a tool with two wisdom wands, a wood pillar, and a Wi-Fi ring together as a tool. I can feel it working in the field, and it stops rotating at different heights when it's finished working. <clears throat> <clears throat> but it's not helping with the situation. <clears throat> so, um, again, when you are, so, and this was, the situation was about the, the inflammation. Um, so really it, it's going deep. So if there are those stuck things, those things that we keep fighting with, um, 
So, you know, and I've talked about it in the past too, like when we, when we did some of our classes, like the soul alchemy class, one of the things in there was, was to simply do the work deeply once with the soul of handing over that situation and then trusting the soul and stepping back and letting go and allowing the time for the shifts to occur versus doing the work handing it over to soul because so really what i'm saying is is that you know if you're wanting it and you're doing all this and it's not working and here's a couple of thoughts one of it is to just truly step into the heart with the soul if this is you that you're working on and simply go into the heart space and say okay here's the situation it is all energy it's all connected to different things you don't have to know the details and you take that and you hand it to soul. You know, we did this exercise with the soul altar where we imagine this altar before us, which we simply set our things onto, which is handing it over to soul, giving our gratitude and stepping back and you handing over this to your soul and handing it off and stepping back is truly you saying, okay, I am complete with this. I don't want to fight this anymore. This is no longer serving me. I allow this situation issue thing to release. And that is the pure simplicity of anything is that releasing. Now then, as soon as you do that and you go back and you're like, oh, damn, that thing still hurts or it's still inflamed and you go back and you start wanting it again and you start to fight it again, you fighting, fighting it also will hold it into creation because that you, uh, because creation, your energy is simply saying, oh, okay, well, I guess we're still playing that game. So here it is. It is still here in creation because we're wanting to fight it. So it's that truly once going into the heart with the soul, releasing it, being in surrender, and totally trusting that that is going to be let loose and then just allow it to have time. Now, as I was talking in the beginning, there's some of these things that we've been doing this with for several months now that haven't released and that is where i feel this new space of nothing again the meditation that we did last 50 questions friday i really feel like this space of nothing will help to dislodge wherever those energies are totally stuck at they're just like stuck energies that are patterning that creation for that swelling or gout or that shoulder or whatever it is. And I really feel like surrendering it over into that nothing space to your soul might be the key to helping to clear some of these long-term things. So anyway, I hope that helps. Um, <clears throat> Because, you know, when it really comes down to it, it, it is, you know, the, the tools that we create are phenomenal space holders and training wheels. And they certainly help us to do a lot of really wonderful things. But when it comes down to our own transformations, it is truly us that have to be a part of that. The human is the one that has to hand it to soul. So the way that we see it is, is that, and, and the way that resonates with me is, is that the soul is the only one that can heal that long-term thing. But you have, as the human have to be complete with that experience and to hand it over to soul. So for you as the human, your your job in the, in, in the, in the healing of whatever it is, is simply being the one that says, okay, soul, here it is. I surrender. I release. I hand this over to you for you to turn this to wisdom 
because I am complete with this experience. Yep, and take that big deep breath, give the gratitude to soul and just step away. Beautiful. I feel a lot of you doing that work right now. And you know, and we've been doing this work for some time, but since the end of March, if you haven't done the work again to release the stuff, do it again, because we're living in a whole new time now to where things aren't as attached there. There's more ability to release a lot of these limitations, this box that we've been in. So, um, and, and every day this things are getting more untangled every day as we begin to bring in more of our true essence and alignment. And as we begin to continue to release these old patterns. Um, so it's a beautiful time and, and you just got to have a little bit of patience with it for sure. Um, all right. So I'll just see if we had any other questions there and, um, <clears throat> Yeah, and and I was trying to think if I had anything else to to share of anything cool that's happening or going on or coming out, and I really don't. I think after we get done with this new chamber, um, that we might be able to start anchoring in a new energy into the tools. Right now, I'm not. I'm still not able to anchor that energetics into into like a ring. Um, it's it, it's something that is. It's in a very elusive energy, but I feel like we will be able to anchor it fully into this new chamber. And then once we do, and we start playing with this for a little while, then we might be able to start anchoring that into the, into the tools. So anyway, look forward to having our website done as well. So right now we are working on our website. Um, so I'm guessing here within the next month, we're going to have a whole new website and that website is going to be you know it's still going to take us some time on the content but i really feel it's going to make it more easily easily navigatable for finding what it is that you're looking for for information tools etc so anyway that's one of the exciting things coming up and i will definitely be posting about the the new ascension chamber the the new horizontal chamber that we're creating I'll be making some social media posts about that once we have it up and running here. So, and um, it'll be set up in a week from a week from yesterday. So this coming Thursday, we will have it set up in Queensbury, New York. And again, it does not cost anything to come to the vending space in Queensbury, New York. And if you are interested in the dowsing convention, there's a lot of great speakers there. And it is from this thursday or wednesday all the way through sunday so anyway all right you guys thank you all for being here today and we'll see you again gosh in two weeks i'm guessing so all right oh one more quick question here um when will it be in Aztec, New Mexico? And what does the new chamber do for animals? So uh, Aztec, New Mexico, that will be the end of August. I believe it's around the 25th that weekend is the is the um, event in Aztec, New Mexico. And I need to get our events page updated. So I'll get our events page updated here in the next couple of weeks. And I'll be sure to put that one on there as well. Um, and put me on the spot. I don't even know if I remember the name. Oh my goodness. Let me see if I can find the name of that event in Aztec. Can't believe it's eluding me. The Sunfire Festival. So Sunfire Fest is what you can look up to find out more information on the one in Aztec. And what does the new chamber do for animals? I'm not even sure what it does for humans yet. Or plants or anything. Um, so we will definitely be playing with that and, and those energies to see. So, 
All right. Well, thank you all for being here today. And yep, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And if you haven't, be sure to go back and check out the last 50 questions Friday and check out that meditation of that no space because um, yeah, I, I think the more that we all play in that space and, and are able to be in that, the more readily available it will be for everybody. So anyway, all right. Thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Have fun.